Hello, this is Professor Urbaswai. Today we will talk about factoring out monomials. Here we go. Okay. Monomials are one term polynomials. One term means you may have a letter, you may have a number, you may have a number with a sign in front of it, a negative. You may have a number with parentheses. Um, you may have a number and a letter. That number is called the coefficient, and the letter is called a variable. You may have a number with a letter, and then with another number. This one is the coefficient. This one is the variable. This one is the degree of that term. So this whole thing is called a term another term, another term, uh, these two are two different terms. This is together, this is together. And the meaning of a number and a letter is that that means that number is actually multiplying the letter. This means 3 times x. This means 4 times x cubed. So these are all monomials. They are one-term polynomials. Now, we are going to learn how to uh, use the distributive property first. You will see this in, um, in algebra books, and then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to move this up so you can see everything. So when you have a times b plus a times c, this a is repeating. You can pull that out and write a times b plus c. That's called distributive property. And when you go from this portion to that portion, you can also use, I use the distributive property or can say, I factored A out. Factored A out, which is a common factor in these two terms. All right, you can do the same thing with the subtraction. A is repeating, and it's the common factor, and you can pull A out and write parentheses B minus C. Or you can do this for more than two terms. Now look at it. A, B, A, C, A, D. It's repeating in three terms. It can repeat in 99 terms if you want. You can pull A out. So you have B left, C left, and D left. And here you have, in addition, here you have a subtraction, addition and subtraction. So understand the logic of this. So let me move this up and so I can show you with the pictures. All right, here you go. You have a smiley face. Here you go. You have a heart. Doesn't matter. Plus, smiley face, a cube. Equals, you pull the smiley face out, and you have parentheses. You have the heart plus the cube. All right? So kind of understand how the logic works. Okay, so. And I actually make those things for you so that you can actually see it. If somebody says factor, so you have 2, this is like the smiley face, times x, like the heart, plus 2 smiley face, y, like the cube. These are two different shapes. You can pull the 2 out, parentheses, you have the heart, plus cube. So you can do that with bunch of other things. And let me do a little, one more problem that is a little bit different. So let's say I have 4x plus 8y. Now, what's repeating? You can actually go one more step. You can write 4x. 8 is actually 4 times 2y equals, now what's repeating? 4 is repeating, so you can pull the 4 out, and you will have x plus 2y. Do you see that? All right, so I factored out 4. And sometimes those factors may be a little bit hidden, and I'll show you an exa example where that happens. Let's look at this problem. This is totally hidden, and I'm going to use these shapes to do it. Okay, so let's look at that. 
9x squared y cubed 27x cubed y squared. So you have to kind of figure out what's repeating and then kind of try to put this in these shapes. This one has a 9 in it. This one has a 27. I know the 27 has inside the 9. So I can think of it like this 9 is repeating and this 9 is repeating in the 27. But I will have a 3 outside. What else is repeating? You have an x squared and x cubed. I know x squared is inside the x cubed, so x squared is also repeating. And now what do I have here? I have x squared repeating, but I still have to have the x in there. You can do the factoring kind of thinking ahead of time if you want. Let's look at the y cube, and this one is y squared. That means y squared, so you're taking the one with the smaller exponent y squared is repeating, y squared is repeating, and now you have what, what is left in here. So I took the 9 out, I took the x squared out, I took the 2 of the y's out, so I still have that y in here. Do you see it? So this works like this smiley face. y is like the heart, and here you have 9xy squared, and you have the 3, and you have the x and y squared is out. So if I can rewrite this like that, you can see how these two things correspond to each shape. And you actually factored that out before you even factored it out. So the smiley face is simply 9x squared, y squared, parentheses, and you're going to have what? You're going to have a y left behind from here plus, and you'll have a 3 left behind, and you have an extra x in there. Now, you can actually check to see if that's correct. So you take this factored form, rewrite it, 9x squared y squared, and you have y plus 3x. Now, you can use the distributive property by what we call foiling back, you just multiply everything. 9x squared, y squared, y, so that's 9x squared. You have three y's, so you have y to the third power because there is a hidden one in there. And now you multiply with that one. 3 times 9, that's 27. And you have x2, and this is x1, a hidden one in there. 2 plus 1, that's 3. And you have a y squared. Now let's look if this thing is what I did before. 9x squared y cubed plus 27x cubed y squared. It looks like it is the right thing. Okay? So, we did a complex case, and then you can just practice. It would have been the same thing if you had a minus or more than one um, factor, but you, it, you will get the same kind of answer. Just try to pull those common things out to factor the common factor out.